Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to read a picture from a sign that was supposedly put in front of a bakery in San Francisco, California. This is regarding pandemic aid. Dear neighbors, it is our absolute pleasure to be able to serve you every day. We are very grateful for your continued business and support. Many have written asking why we have not replaced our door that was broken the night after this past Christmas, and I wanted to explain. We have applied to the city's storefront vandalism relief grant program seven times, with only one response. Quote, Your application was reviewed and was found incomplete due to missing proof of damage. In order to be considered, you must submit a new application. This is an incorrect statement, as we have submitted the correct proof. Additionally, the proof of damage had been filmed and reported on news outlets across the country. Nonetheless, we went on to submit three more applications without responses. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have spent $27,000 repairing windows at our San Francisco locations. Our current door was quoted at over $8,000 to replace. We are not writing this to receive the attention of national news. I'm not a spokesperson for what is wrong with the city I love that my family calls home. But that said, we pay some of the highest small business taxes and fees in the nation. Our elected officials promote this grant as a solution for local small businesses. We deserve some response and assistance from them. Until then, this door will remain broken, and I am sincerely sorry for this. Gratefully, Patrick Scasso, owner, La Marais Bakery. I thought this would be something interesting to go over on this channel. There are a few things that I think are worth mentioning here. The first is that while my heart goes out to the people who own this business, from what I read from their ratings and reviews, they genuinely care about their customers and they seem to make amazing quality products and really do care about their business, there is one thing that I just minorly disagreed with. When they say, I am not a spokesperson for what is wrong with the city I love and my family calls home, when, when they say that, it, it's one of those things where I think they're putting that in there to, as a preface to their message because they're afraid of being attacked for pointing out reality as they know it in their particular area. If you are a taxpayer in your particular area, if you are a small business owner in your area, if, if you do anything to contribute to the well-being of your small corner of the world, then you are a spokesperson for what you believe to be wrong in that corner of the world. And one of the things that I'll notice every now and then on Reddit is I'll read comments saying, he's arrogant, egotistical, blah. And something to understand is that I think more people need to stop caring so much about that when describing their experiences and what they believe. I'm not saying that you should lie. I'm not saying that you should try and go out of your way to deceive people, nor am I saying that you should pretend to be an expert in a matter when you are not an expert in a matter. Very often on this channel, I'll tell you, in this area, I know what I'm doing. In this area, I am a complete buffoon. And I'll usually preface my statements by saying that I am an idiot. I'll show you my credentials. I failed chemistry in high school and so on and so forth. But in all seriousness, if you pay taxes in an area and you have built something in an area that provides people with joy, you have the right to point out that your door has been broken over and over and over again and that you have spent five figures of your own money in trying to fix it. If you are not qualified to be a spokesperson for your corner of the world, then who is? And dare I say it, the people that tend to volunteer to be a spokesperson for you on your behalf are very rarely people that have your best interests at heart. They often tend to be people that are looking for power as a result of expressing something that other people feel like they can't say. Rather than allow those people to rise to power and then to screw you over again, how about you speak for yourself and your interests and your aggravations and the struggles that you go through as a taxpaying citizen that 100% has the right to complain about your local government screwing you. This is not something that's going to change unless more people speak up about it. In the past, I would make mild little pokes every now and then when it came to what bothered me about New York City, and I didn't really go full mask off until a few years ago after standing in front of my store the night of June 2nd, 2020, holding my grandpa's titanium stick and just like watching people walk by and break into many of the businesses around my business, and uh, luckily not mine because maybe you know, there was somebody there for some of it. And remembering when I finally got tired and decided to ride my bike home, uh, two feelings. The first feeling that I felt was this fear that, oh, you know, as soon as I go home, something's going to happen here. They're going to destroy the gate. And the second feeling was guilt because as I rode my bike home, I watched other businesses get uh, ransacked in nasty ways. And I did nothing about it because I believed I did not have the power to do anything about it. I'm not the authorities, this, that, or the other. And I just kind of watched a lot of stuff happened and didn't do anything, and perhaps it wasn't my place to do something, but I still remember that feeling, and it was after that that I decided I'm, I'm just, 
I'm done. I'm not letting you get one past me ever again. And I've gone over this in this channel many times. Whether you have a police officer in the city that was introducing the Leads Online program to all of us that explicitly told us, point blank to our face, if you are not buying a laptop, if somebody recycles it here, you don't need to hear, use this program. And then finding out you actually do have to use that program, and if you don't, you'll get fined for it. But by the way, we're not going to have somebody at the city that can read that to you. Or we're talking about an audit that lasted almost a year and a half where they asked for more money than what's actually in my bank account, even if I were to sell my entire business and all of my assets. Um, <laughs> and then they figured out that, oh, my bad, bro. You actually only owe us maybe $5,000. Or where they put a lien on my business, which affected my business's credit rating for many years and its ability to actually make money. Um, this, this, this is, see, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing you have to understand about all of this. Now, this is a fake lien, by the way, because I actually paid those taxes, as you'd find out if you watch this entire series, is that there is no incentive structure for any of these areas to change as long as people preface their statements that way. Uh, you know, again, we are not writing this to receive the attention of national news uh, or to be a spokesperson for the city that I love and my family calls home. And again, this is the part that is going to hit really hard, but for a lot of people, they really need to hear this, is that they're never going to change because there's there's no incentive structure for them to change. It's, as long as you are willing to live in that particular area, nothing will change because there's no reason for them to become more competent. There is no reason for them to have respect for you because, again, what are you going to do? Go to the other government? There's one government. The entire concept of government is a monopoly on force in that particular area. Now, this is something that can work if you have people that are ready and willing and able to move on a regular basis when their local government goes out of control and when the residents in that particular area do not vote those individuals out. But if that's not going to happen, then you wind up with this. You wind up with this Stockholm syndrome where, uh, again, as this gentleman says, they are paying some of the highest taxes in the country on their business. And not only can they not trust local government to protect that business so that they do not have to spend $27,000 fixing the door of their bakery over and over and over again, but they also cannot trust them when they come out with a basic grant program to operate it properly. And, you know, I would honestly prefer that they not come out with a grant program at all than have a grant program that they release and then deny people based on obvious garbage like this. And again, when they say your application was reviewed and found to be incomplete, this really does feel the same way that I felt when I hear, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, that all the, yeah, all those receipts that you had, all the receipts that you had, all the emails with the customer that demonstrate that this was a recycled device and not something you purchased, yeah, we don't care about that, give us money. And it, the, what allows your local government to get away with this is the fact that you are not willing to leave. And more people need to feel like it's okay to be arrogant. More people need to be willing to point out the problems in these areas. More people need to not care what other people think of them when they say this, because I, again, I know why they're coaxing it this way. I know. I lived in New York City long enough. We are not writing this to receive the attention of national news. I'm not a spokesperson. What is wrong with blah, blah, blah. And they have to say, I love and my family calls home. They are saying all of that because they're afraid of being called a right-wing grifter. Let's just be real. Like they're, they're afraid that somebody in their comments is going to say, you are a right-wing grifter. You're doing this to get views. You're doing this to get attention. You're doing this because you believe fascism has a home here and all. That, that's, that's what they're doing. They're doing this because they're, they're writing that because they're afraid. And that very fear is the thing that is going to keep these areas the way that they are. And that's something that I think genuinely needs to change. And, you know, it was something that I thought about many, many years ago when I was not doing videos about my honest experience in these places. And I'm kind of glad that New York City went above and beyond to, again, find me for shit they didn't have an answer to. Take four hours on the phone to be able to allow me to pay the fine for the law that they couldn't tell me how I broke. Or, or try to take over $1 million of money that I literally don't have. Like, or, or or place a lien on me, or place a lien on my company for almost 10 years and cause me to stay on the phone for hours upon hours upon hours to get it released. I'm happy that happened because it pushed me over the edge of not caring. And it's important that you not let these things into your head. I, I know who I am. I know what my beliefs are. I uh, know who I would vote for and wouldn't vote for. And I know who I am. I don't really care what people in my comments say. I have post stuff like that when New York does something stupid. And uh, I post stuff like this when other people do something that's stupid. And I get, I, I don't really care if it makes people mad. I say things as I see it. And more people need to be open to doing this. I lost a good amount of money 
in moving out of New York City. 40 to 60% of my business used to be walk-in. Now that's closer to like 5% because virtually nobody walks in here. Because A, there is 10% of the population in the city I moved to than there was in New York City. But more importantly, B, it takes several years to build up a walk-in following. If you have a business in an area for three or five or 10 years, you are going to have a following. And when you just uproot that business and move it across the country, you're not going to have that following again immediately. So I recognize, I understand that I'm in a very privileged position when I'm saying what I'm saying, which is that you need to be open to getting up and moving. It's easy for me to say because I have a, I have a good amount of mail in business. So I recognize that half of my staff was not going to be willing to move, but also half of my business would be going away. So that problem is one of those things that kind of worked itself out when I moved. Half the business, half the employees... It's, it's, again, it's one of those things where it just really did kind of neatly work itself out. And I understand that if you are a bakery where 99% of your business is going to be people walking in and buying something, it's very easy for some jackass in a scratched up armchair who's high on God knows what's in this bottle because I can barely read it right now, is I understand that it probably seems like a, a dickhead thing for me to say, which is you cannot have this mindset of, yes, I love my home and my family loves our home and we are going to stay here and blah, 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 blah. Trust me, I understand that I'm probably coming off like a bit of an asshole. But the problem that we have is that this is not going to get any better as long as people are in this mindset. And I'm saying this to you. I'm saying this to you as a person who had his own audience for like four effing years screaming at me, Lewis, get out of New York. Lewis, they're going to mess you up financially. Look, this is a bit, get out of that city. And I ignored them. I ignored them because I did not want to have to let go of employees that couldn't move. And admittedly, honestly, a big part of it is I didn't want to spend, you know, thirty or $60,000 moving my stuff across the country. I did not want to risk having less business when I moved. I did not want to lower my income. I did not want to up my stress, having to take everything that I have built, toss it into the back of a truck or several backs of a truck, and then rebuild it all again here while having to deal with the fact that all of my customers are going to expect a seamless transition where there's no delays or anything in any of these repairs as all of this is happening, realizing I'm going to be paying two sets of staff that sometimes this set of staff in the new place or that set of staff in the old place may not have anything to do. There's a lot of cost involved to something like this, to setting everything up again. There's a lot of cost involved in moving and I don't want to pay it. Now, here's the thing I can tell you. Here's the thing I can tell you from experience is that the peace of mind that you have when you walk to your business and your door is not broken. Not just not today, but I mean just, just never broken. That peace of mind is worth the aggravation. It's worth the several months of extreme excruciating stress. Because just like right now, again, right now I have pain in my mouth. I have horrible pain right here in spite of the fact that I've taken a good amount of this stuff. It's a different type of pain because the pain that I had before was I knew it was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Now I have a similar level of pain, but that's because somebody spent two hours doing this, trying to rip some shit out of my mouth because it was stubborn and admittedly its owner was stubborn and should have had it removed 17 effing years ago. So now I have the same level of pain, but I realize it's on the way down. Like tomorrow it's going to be less and the day after that will be less and the day after that will be less and the day after that will be even less until it's no longer there at all. And that is a better pain. Right now you're in the stage over here where your pain is just going up because again, you know your city officials do not give a shit about you. They're literally laughing at you. When they say you did not submit uh, proof of damage, again, I don't, I don't live in San Francisco. I don't have to live in San Francisco. I know enough from people that do live there to know that you are dealing with the exact same morons running your section of the country as the morons that run my section of the country that, well, you can just listen to this three-hour phone call if you have any curiosity about that or this or, well, any of it. Uh, they're, they're laughing at you, and they're, they're not going to stop until you leave. And when you do leave, when, again, when you spend a year and a half arguing with the state over what is and is not taxable, with them trying to take a million of your dollars, and then you call the Texas State Comptroller, and within seven minutes, somebody comes on the phone and is happy to, on a recorded line, clarify for you that something is not taxable and this thing is taxable, and is even willing to sell and send you a, a certified mail letter just so that you have it in case you get audited. The peace of mind you will experience in that moment is worth all the stress leading up to it. The peace of mind you experience when you don't feel a sense of fear that something is going to go horribly wrong, that the city is either going to ignore 
or that the city was directly responsible for. It's worth it. It's worth it. That's about all I'm going to have to say today. Don't be ashamed to speak the truth as you know it at the time. Don't care whether people around you are going to make assumptions about you, your politics, whether they're going to be mad at you or anything else. Speak the truth as you know it at the time. And let the chips fall where they may. When somebody is talking about you and getting mad and saying that is egotistical or arrogant or this, that, or the other, how, why should he have the right to say that? What in reality they're usually doing is they are confessing that they lack confidence and admittedly they lack the convictions to actually speak what they believe to be the truth and what they think needs to be said in order for the world to change in a positive direction. And that's not your problem. That's theirs. And I don't want you to allow other people's fear, other people's lack of confidence to affect the way that you conduct yourself, the way that you live your life. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And to the owners, employees, and customers of La Marais Bakery, I wish you all the best of luck. I'll see you in the next video.